When certain molecules bind to a receptor on a taste bud cell, they will send a nerve impulse from the taste bud to the brain that indicates that this molecule tastes sweet. Carbohydrates differ in their degree of sweetness. Compared with the sweetness of glucose, which in some systems is classified a relative value of 1, the sweetness of sucrose is about 1.45. Fructose, on the other hand, the sweetest of all the sugars, has a relative value of 1.65. Lactose, the type of sugar found in milk, is only one-sixth as sweet as glucose. Aside from the sugars, there are other molecules which can also cause a sweet sensation. These are known as artificial sweeteners. Saccharin was the first artificial sweetener that was discovered, and it was discovered in 1878. Saccharin does not count as a carbohydrate because it does not have the number of hydroxyl groups present in the carbon chains or the cyclic carbon rings. Based on taste testing, saccharin is determined to be about 300 times as su sweeter than glucose. Another artificial sweetener is aspartame. This was discovered in 1965 and approved by the FDA in 1981. Aspartame is considered to be about 180 times sweeter than glucose. From a structural standpoint, aspartame contains amino acid phenylalanine. Because of this, aspartame should not be used by people who have PKU, which is a sensitivity to phenylalanine. Another artificial sweetener is a sulfame K which was approved by the FDA as an artificial sweetener in 1988. A sulfame K is considered to be 200 times sweeter than glucose. An advantage of a sulfame K is that it's more stable than aspartame at higher temperatures. One of the more recent artificial sweeteners is sucralose. Sucralose was discovered in 1976 and approved by the FDA as an artificial sweetener in 1998. Sucralose is considered to be 600 times sweeter than glucose. Another advantage of sucralose is that it's stable at baking temperatures and it's also stable for long periods of time. Sucralose has a structure very similar to disaccharides. One difference, as you see in the structure here, is that it replaces three of the hydroxyl groups from sucrose with chlorine atoms. In addition, the C4 of the glucose unit gets inverted. In other words, its position, up or down, is switched. This means that technically it's no longer a glucose unit, but a galactose unit. The chlorines present in sucralose allow this molecule to hide from the various enzymes that would break it down and so sucralose is not processed by the body so we do not derive nutritional value or calories from sucralose.